Hi, my name is Zach Stoltz. I'm a partner at Chisholm, Chisholm & Kilpatrick. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are going to talk about five questions to ask a representative before hiring them for your VA claim. And I am joined by Courtney Ross. And we're going to kind of talk through some of this stuff today. Courtney is a veterans attorney with us who has several years of experience. Uh, and she and I are going to kind of go back and forth on what we believe is important and five of the most important questions. There are obviously more than five, but five of the most important questions you should be asking a potential representative. There are lots of choices now in the world of veterans representation, and we think that it's important for you all to be informed before you sign up with somebody who is going to really be a, a pretty important part of your life uh, as far as pursuing your VA case is. The first question that we think that uh, maybe one should ask a representative before hiring is, are you accredited by the Department of Veterans Affairs? Courtney, can you walk us through a little bit of that? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a really important question. And I think one of the first things you should be asking before you decide to hire any representative. Um, so basically, accreditation by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs means that your representative has the legal authority to prepare, present, and prosecute your claims um, before VA, both for veterans, for service members, for your dependents, and for any survivors who um, step into the shoes of a veteran. Um, if your representative is not accredited by VA, it means they don't have that same legal authority. So this is really important. Um, and VA actually has a public facing website um, where you can search uh, the name of any representative that you're considering to confirm whether they have actually been accredited by VA um, or not. Um, and we're gonna include the link to that public facing website for anybody who wants to utilize it in the description of this video. Um, and I would definitely recommend, it's really easy to search, it's very user friendly, you can just do it by first and last name um, and their name should pop up if they are accredited um, immediately for you. Here at CCK, we think this is really important and our case managers and supervisors are all accredited individuals um, by VA. I'm gonna tackle the next question and then we'll recap at the end of this, the top five questions that we have. But the second question that we have, how much professional experience do you have? And this is something that is very important because this varies as, as widely as one can possibly imagine. And it's important to get a sense of your potential representatives experience practicing VA law. VA law is its own thing. Uh, it's, it's, it, it is similar to administrative law uh, in other areas, for example, similar to things like social security or other benefit systems, um, but it is a bit, frankly, more complicated uh, than, than most other systems. And there is a lot of change that goes on with it. There are a lot of different cases that come out. There are a lot of regulatory changes. There have been major statutory changes. And you wanna make sure that your representative has enough experience and has lived enough of a VA life, right? To, to, to be familiar with what's going on um, and be plugged into, their, in, into the veterans law community. And so it's important to kind of ask, have you worked on various types of claims, uh, physical disabilities, mental health disabilities, combinations of physical and mental uh, disabilities? These are the types of things that we see very, very often at, at CCK. And you can see on our website how much experience we have. I personally have been doing this for about 15 years. I know Courtney's been doing it for, for a number of years. Uh, and we have people uh, people in our firm who, who, for example, have experience working for the Board of Veterans Appeals and now work with CCK. And we, I can assure you, have handled cases that have a lot of complicated, both uh, disability aspects and legal aspects to them. Do you take cases, for example, all the way to the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims? We do, that's mostly what I do, frankly, uh, is handle cases and, and, and handle uh, cases with our, our big team of lawyers here, our, our larger team of lawyers here who do take the cases to the CAVC. Um, can you represent at the agency level? That's VA and the Board of Veterans Appeals. We check all those boxes as well, as well at Chisholm, Chisholm and Kilpatrick. And do you understand the appeals process? The, a, a major piece of litigation, or I'm sorry, of legislation that happened very recently is called the Appeals Modernization Act. And it really changed the procedures for the way VA cases go through both the agency system, the board system, and then once it gets out of the VA system and goes to the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims or the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit, they are very, very different. There's a legacy system, which is different than the AMA or Appeals uh, Modernization Act system. And it would be good, in our opinion, that your representative uh, is, is familiar with both of those systems because they it, it can change the outcome of a case. And some cases are, are legacy, some cases are AMA, and some cases 
are a hybrid of the two, and it can get very, very complicated very, very quickly. And so it's a good idea for your representative to be very up to speed on that. And another thing that has struck us as, as we've uh, gone about our business of representing veterans and their families is whether they outsource any of their legal work, um, whether, whether they send it out to, to, to other people or whether they keep it within their own firm. And CCK, for example, keeps everything in our own firm. Uh, we, we work on them as a team. You may not get you know, an individual uh, uh, attorney as much as you get an entire team of people that are all headquartered at Chisholm, Chisholm, and Kilpatrick. And of course, due to the pandemic, headquartered doesn't necessarily mean all in one physical location, but we are all in touch with each other. And so it's something to, to keep an eye on as you're shopping around for who is going to help you out with your cases. And so let's go to our third question. And the third question is, how much do you charge? And probably should be the first question, but we have it as number three. So Courtney, how much do we charge and how much should people be looking to spend on this very important part of, of, of their lives? Yeah, this is another really important question that I think um, anyone who's looking for a representative, you know, to your point, Zach, this probably is actually going to be the first question that they have. Um, and so really it's important to just you want to do your research. You want to know um, and shop around for what different rep, dif what different representatives you're considering hiring um, will be charging. And there's a few important things that you want to keep in mind as you're shopping around and asking this question. One is that there are VA regulations that govern when a representative can charge you a fee um, and how much they can charge. So an, one important point to keep in mind is that the VA regulations have specific language in them that say, fees that exceed 33.33%, .33%, so 33 and a third percent, of any past due benefits awarded are considered or are presumed an unreasonable fee. Um, and so there's a couple important parts to that sentence. The first is obviously the 33 and a third percent. Um, anything exceeding that is unreasonable. The other part I want to highlight here, though, is uh, of any past due benefits. So if you're talking to a representative and continue, uh, considering signing on with them, and they the, the fee agreement that you're signing with them um, is based on a certain percentage of a retroactive payment to you once you get a grant of benefits, you want to pay attention to the number and you want to make sure that it's going to be based only on a retroactive payment, so a past due benefits. The fee shouldn't come out of any future benefit that you receive, meaning that if you are a veteran who was granted service connection today for a condition that's been pending, next month you'll start to, you'll receive the first payment of your monthly benefit payment that's going to continue to come to you on a monthly um, monthly basis from VA now. None of the fee should come out of those future payments. It should only be the retroactive lump sum payment that VA makes to you when the benefit's granted. And so I think that's a really important um, thing to keep in mind when you are shopping around um, and considering and asking questions about how the fee agreements will be and what you'll be responsible for paying um, to the representative that you hire. The other important thing to keep in mind is that fees shouldn't be charged for filing initial claims with VA, meaning that if you're filing a, a claim for service connection for a condition that you've never filed before, it's never been adjudicated by VA, this is the first time you're filing, um, you're using the what's called the VA Form 526, um, a fee should not be charged at that point just for submitting that claim on your behalf. And so that's really important to keep in mind too. Um, but you know, to, to Zach's point, this is a, a question that's going to be on any veteran's mind who's searching for representation. Um, and it's just really important to ask this question, like I said, to do your research um, and really understand what it is that you're going to be charged for the, the individual's services that you're hiring. Thank you for that, Courtney. Uh, question number four, which is going to come my way. Uh, can you tell me more about your firm? So you're kind of going through your checklist of, of things that you want to know about who you're choosing to be your representative. Uh, and we, we say firm here. We obviously work for a law firm with, with attorneys and credited agents and, and other people who help us uh, as, as a team. But you may be looking for, for somebody who, who is more of a solo practitioner or somebody that has a smaller office, in which case you ask more about their practice. Um, so we're using firm here as, as kind of the larger you know, catch-all word. And it, but it is helpful to get a sense of the firm as a whole. Do you have a well-known and proven track record of success. Uh, at CCK, you can look at our website, cck-law.com. It, it has on there a lot of the stuff that we've accomplished, um, sometimes with help from, from, from other people in the veterans law community, of course. 
uh, has a lot of the court decisions that we've won. It has some uh, examples of some cases that we've won at the agency. And so it is, it's good to check that. And there are a lot of websites that are really quite good um, and, and can help you through that process. It is also worth doing if, you, if you're not satisfied with what's on the website to, to ask the person who is, is talking with you about what their track record of success looks like. I'll be honest, we're lawyers and, and advocates, and so we're not going to make any promises. It's just not the way we're going to do business. Uh, and it, it's not really an ethical thing to do. We, the only promise that we can make is that we will work very hard on your case uh, and that we have won cases like yours in the past if it's a case that we are going to take on. But that's about it. Um, but I think that that's another good thing to kind of look for. It's, it's not somebody trying to sell you a bill of goods. It's somebody saying, we're going to do our best. Uh, it's going to ultimately up, be up to the Department of Veterans Affairs or to the court or to wherever we are, um, what you're going to get awarded and when, but we'll do our very, very best to help you through that process. Um, and along those lines, it's, it's worth thinking about awards and recognitions that the firm may have won. Um, it's good to ask about those types of things. There are several parts of, of the VA law community um, that, that have some, some nice awards that are given out by the court or, or, or recognized by the Department of Veterans Affairs or recognized by the National Organization of Veterans Advocates, uh, NOVA, which gives out awards. Um, it, it, it's good to kind of know that. It's not the end of the discussion by any means, but it's, it's something that you can kind of know that, that other people in the field are vouching for these representatives or vouching for us uh, and, and, and recognize that, that they are helping veterans and, and their families. And then, of course, how many years has your firm been accredited in practicing VA law? It's, it's good to be realistic about this because when you have a team approach, you're going to have some people working on your case that may not have been accredited for, for a really long time. But the supervisor or the person that's going to ultimately sign the papers and make sure that your case is, is going the right way is somebody who needs to have been around a little bit, I think. Um, so it's good to know how many years that the firm as a whole really has in representing veterans at, at all stages. And you're going to have your own comfort level with that. Um, but like I say, you know, at CCK, we have we have decades and decades and decades of shared experience, um, which can really, really help, especially as I referenced before. And as Courtney and I have talked about in the complicated system that, that is VA. So question four, can you tell me more about your firm? And for the last question for today, number five, Courtney, do you have examples of cases that you have won? Yeah. So this question, I think, um, this really echoes some of what Zach's talked about with asking to, you know, the representative to, to tell you more about their firm or to tell you more about their experience. But even on a more specific level, you can ask them to see a, an example of a similar case that they've won if, um, you know, that can help to give you a better sense of how they're going to represent you. Um, Zach just mentioned that here at CCK, we have case examples on our website that veterans can take a look at, um, real cases that we've won here at CCK, both at the agency level and at uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims, um, which speaks to, again, another point Zach made earlier about continuing service throughout every step of the process, right? So you want to know if the representative or the firm that you're hiring um, can offer services at the agency level, but if you're interested, um, can also offer services at the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims or other st uh, other steps in the process. Um, you know, getting a case example can also give you some insight into the type of development that uh, your representative might do on your case, what that would look like, and by development I mean evidence that they might gather outside uh, independent expert opinions or lay testimony from you. Um, it can also give you just some insight into, you know, how they formulate strategy and uh, around basically the appealing the issue that you're asking them to represent you on. Um, I think real life examples from the person you're considering hiring to can also speak to the larger points that Zach was making about just the firm itself and certainly the experience that that individual or that firm might have working in VA law in legacy, in AMA, and on the specific condition or the issue that you're seeking assistance with. Um, and so don't hesitate to ask for real case examples. It can be really helpful and give a lot of insight into what a firm or a representative can do uh, for you when you're shopping around. That is going to do it for the five questions. So let's recap them. Are you accredited by the Department of Veterans Affairs? How much professional experience do you have? How much do you charge? Can you tell me more about your firm? And do you have examples of cases that you have won? 
To find out more about CCK, please visit our blog, which is cck-law.com slash blog. You can also just go to cck-law.com and learn as much as you can about our law firm so that you're comfortable. If you should choose to talk with us about your case, we are always happy to do so. Please be sure that you do it whenever you're shopping around for other for other advocates or, or veteran service organizations or other really great options for representing your case. Um, but these are things that we hope will help you pick the right advocate for you. Thank you very much. This is Courtney Ross and Zach Soltz signing off. Thanks. Thanks.